So happy to have you along. We are joined, as always, by Greg Angert, beer director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group, which includes where we are, Church Key, downstairs, Birch and Barley. Greg, a food and wine sommelier of the year. Always good to see you. You too. What is on tap this week? So this week we have something um, really special and exciting. I mean, not that they're not all special and exciting, but this one strikes a, a, a specific chord because it's a beer that um, that I brewed um, along with Megan Parisi. Well, then the of course, brewmaster <laughs> for um, uh, neighborhood restaurant uh, for the for Blue Jacket, which is the the brewery restaurant bar coming up in a couple months uh, down by National Stadium in D.C. Um, as I think most people know at this point, we've been traveling around for over a year now, um, brewing collaboration beers with uh, a number of amazing breweries, both in the United States, but also uh, we went to Belgium in the fall, uh, right around Halloween time. So uh, while we were there, we brewed with uh, Urbain Coteau at Strusa, but also we brewed with Yvonne de Batz at uh, De La Seine, Brasserie De La Seine, which is only the second brewery um, uh, in Brussels proper. The other being, of course, Cantillon, the, uh, the fermenter in, of, of Wild Lambic. So uh, while we were there, we brewed with Yvonne at, at De La Seine. And a thing about, that's really interesting about this brewery is Yvonne is uh, one of uh, the most amazing Belgian brewing minds. He has a huge collection of, of old Belgian brewing books. He is the authority on Belgian beer history. So we learned a lot while we were with him. And he also happens to make some of the most outstanding uh, Belgian beers out there and uh, some of the most unique. Um, I think before we've talked about how Belgian beers can sometimes kind of all taste a little bit similar these days. You know, um, there's so much Belgian beer that comes into the country uh, and they, they're typified by a kind of sweetness and a fruity spicy note in the nose. Belgian ale yeast and uh, you know, higher temp fermentation tends to give us a lot of fruity, spicy flavors. Uh, Yvonne longs for the old days when almost all Belgian beer had hop character. Uh, you know, today now we, we think of like American beers and IPAs and pale ales being really, really hoppy, and Belgian beers being not hoppy at all and sweet and fruit forward. Um, Yvonne is quick to point out that in the old days there was more balance to these beers. So at De La Seine, with amazing beers like Terras Bulba uh, and Zinnabeer, uh, he has been uh, ceaselessly aiming to bring back this kind of dry Belgian character. I like him already. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic stuff. And it's great because it's not hoppy like an American IPA or pale right. ale. So it's not going to alienate people who are looking for something a little bit that, not too bitter but still dry. And it still has that wonderful kind of fruit and spice quality. Um, we wanted to do you know, a classic Belgian dry um, beer with him. And then we started thinking about, you know, classic styles that have kind of gone away. So this is called Gray Jacket, um, a play on Blue Jacket. The gray comes from the style that this is. It's something called Grisette. <clears throat> Grisette is an old um, style of beer that kind of went away in Belgium, in Wallonia, in the southern French-speaking um, farmlands of Belgium. And it really is a kind of saison, uh, so fermented with a farmhouse ale yeast, but brewed with a percentage of malted wheat. Um, rather than just all barley malt. So we used about 12% malted wheat. It makes it a little bit hazy. It gives it a kind of grayish quality. It's not super pale in color and it's not brown and the middle is gray. And grisette refers to that gray uh, color and therefore gray uh, jacket, so. Gorgeous color yeah, though. Yeah, it's beautiful uh, though. Yeah. Definitely not gray. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So it has a kind of uh, rustic, like earthy sure. quality from the, from the fermentation. Very floral as well. Nice and dry, though. Really dry. I yeah. really like that. Mm. And it kind of goes on and on. Yeah. So it's got a perfumed, floral, grassy note to it. It's not very fruity at all. Earthy hop character in the finish. But you, it, the, the linger of the finish is amazing, isn't it? You still taste it oh, yeah. on your palate. So instead of being like a, a really intense hop kick, it's a kind of a long, um, gentle, earthy dryness, which is fantastic. You went over there to brew this. Now, how long did you have to wait to try it? You, you had to wait until <laughs> I got time. over it's here, a great right? Great question. Um, <laughs> a little so shaky a little bit, a little, up that uh, first bottle. The little known um, fact, actually, about imports is that they take, at minimum, five weeks to get here, from leaving the brewery to getting to a retail uh, off-premise or an on-premise bar or restaurant account. So there's always a very, very long um, period in between. And so, you know, we were, waiting, we were kind of aware of that and waiting for that. 
Uh, we were lucky to have some friends uh, who were traveling in Belgium who tasted the beer um, much before it arrived here. Uh, and even some of them brought some over for us or shipped them to us. So we tasted a little bit before it actually arrived. And this is a low, um, a yield, a low yield beer. Most of it stayed in Belgium um, or northern France and Europe. Only about 72 cases came to the United States, but um, roughly uh, 25 to 30 percent of that case total uh, is here at Church Key and Birch and Barley. So uh, you definitely can come on by and taste it. It's bottle only. We did not do any kegs of it, uh, which is fantastic too because, you know, I've often remarked about how hoppier beer should be drank as fresh as possible. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, you, you know, bottles and even kegs can oxidize if they're waiting too long. One of the great things about Belgian beer is re-fermentation in the bottle. So the fact that the beer in bottle is re-fermented means that there's a constant kind of push of CO2 being created by the yeast. And then even when I poured it, you can see there's a little bit of haze from yeast that sediment in here. That CO2 creates a blanket that keeps oxidation out and keeps a freshness in the beer um, that is stunning. I mean, this still has a great hop character to it. Uh, even though it's been so long since it was packaged uh, and when it got here. And one last thing I'll say about the hops that we use, uh, which is really cool, we hop this beer um, evenly and throughout the brewing process. So even as we brought the, the sugar water, the wort, after the mash into the, into the kettle where we boil the beer, there were already hops waiting for the beer. So you, we started immediately early on in the kettle, hopping the beer, and then hopping throughout the boil, and then uh, after the boil, uh, in the whirlpool, we added more uh, hops to further the kind of aromatic hop character of the beer. And the last thing that was super cool is we wanted to incorporate some American hop character. So, of course, remember, Blue Jacket is not a brewery yet. So uh, it's not like we have uh, a storage facility with all these hops on hand or anything like that. So we, uh, the craft beer community is, is close, um, and especially the local community. And our friends at DC Brow, uh, we're, we're, we're really cool, and they let us have some of their Citra hops, which right is on. Pacific Northwest, big, uh, orangey, um, tropically fruity hop character from that hop. And uh, we actually shipped them over to Belgium in anticipation of our arrival. So this is brewed with some classic kind of European continental varieties that give it that earthy, grassy, floral tone, uh, like Saz from the Czech Republic. It's kind of spicy. Premiant, which is also a Czech hop that's a little bit more intense. Uh, Hallertauer Hersbrucker from the Hallertau region of Germany, and a little bit of Citra to give it just a, a touch of uh, kind of an American craft brewing uh, mentality. I mean, the beer is alive. It, it rejuvenates and protects itself. Yeah, yeah, it does. Beer, nothing short of miraculous. Right. What would you pair this with? So, you know, it is a drier Belgian style, so you're going to want something that can handle that little bit of bitterness that we have here. I think of all things salty, and I've been thinking about like pork belly, um, which is fantastic on its own, or like pancetta, uh, and then you think about like carbonara or something like that, something that's creamy and rich and salty. This will slice right into it. The bitterness will kind of pronounce the salt and therefore make the bitterness even less uh, intense. We have uh, some questions for you. I think we're going to get to them next time and the time after that. We're running out of time this time. If you, in the meantime, if you have a question for Greg, here is the email address. It is beeroftheweek at WTOP.com. Greg, thank you as thank always. You. We appreciate it. Everyone, please always do drink responsibly. And be sure to bring your thirst next time for another Beer of the Week.